okay, first things first, I need to put on a pair of glasses so people think I know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now that I look like an intellectual and like I know what I'm talking about, I'll first be covering most of the basics, but don't worry, I'll go through all the stats like resistance penetration, defense reduction, damage reduction, speed, I'll go through all of them. All of these work and scale the same way. Anytime you have a percentage of like increase your percentage HP by 20% or increase your attack by 40%, it's scaling off of this gray number. It's not 40% of 1600, it's 40% of 800. This number comes from your character level as well as your light color. I also want to quickly go over some other damage multipliers. Because the damage in Honkai works very similarly to how it works in Genshin, it's pretty much just as powerful. So something like this that Pele has where you reduce the enemy's defense is extremely powerful. And it's its own separate multiplier. Sampo also has a separate damage multiplier. It increases the damage taken by an enemy. This is not the same as increasing the damage you deal, like what Branya provides with her E skill. When you see increase the damage taken by an enemy, that's its own separate multiplier that's a lot more powerful than just increasing your damage. However, increasing your damage, whether that's your crit damage or damaging boosting modifiers like from your planar sphere, is a lot more valuable than attack. Resistance penetration is also very powerful. Just like in Genshin, you can actually penetrate past zero. Enemies take 10% less total damage when they have their toughness bar active. On top of this, all enemies have 20% resistance to all elements, except for the element that they're weak to, or unless stated otherwise. So take an enemy like Ice out of space. He resists ice damage. This is very significant. So instead of just resisting 20% ice, he resists like 40 or 60% of ice damage. He's weak to fire, wind, and quantum. This means that he has 0% resistance to fire, wind, and quantum damage. If I were to use my Celia against him and she was in her buff state, she would deal damage to him as if he had negative 20% quantum resistance, which is just another damage multiplier. Because of this, this makes resistance penetration very powerful because it can make enemies resistance zero or in the negative. The same works for defenses. There is a lot of different defense multipliers. For example, Damage they receive decreases by 12%. This type of damage reduction works like Xingqiu's Rain Swords. Damage dealt to all allies decreases by 8%. There's also Shield Strength. Whenever you see Shield Strength, this is the best way to increase your shield absorption power. It's much better than just increasing whatever this stat that is scaling your shield is. So for example, Trailblaze MC scales with defense for his shield. It's much better to increase the shield strength rather than increasing your defense. This is because it works similarly to how outgoing healing works where it takes the total amount of healing or in this case shielding and then adds 20% of it on top of that. If you're ever looking to increase the power of your shields then try and find the maximum damage absorption stat. Outgoing healing just increases the amount of healing by that set amount. So for example if I have let's just say 30% outgoing healing boost, then my total healing will increase by 30%. Very straightforward. If you're curious as to what's more beneficial, HP or healing, I would say healing boost is probably more powerful, but if you have a very good HP body piece that has like 10 speed on it, that might actually be more valuable. Just like with damage, you should try and fit multiple layers of defense benefits and diversify your mitigation and your team to maximize your tankiness. Next is speed. A lot of people, I'm sure, are confused as to how this kind of works. There's two important things about speed. First, it influences the time interval between characters finishing their actions in between their next action. This just basically means over the course of battle, the more speed that you have, the more actions you can take. It also influences their, the order in which they enter combat. First things first is you're going to want to go to the last tab in the settings section. Go to this setting right here and click display. Honestly, this should just be on by default, but it's not. So next, we just entered battle, right? Take note of my character's speed values. 141 speed. She's the first to go up. And my Fireblaze MC has 116. Battle order goes from 
the highest speed value to the low speed value. And as you can see, there is a white number in a black box. This white number indicates their action value. Action value de determines when a character is next up in the queue to perform an action. The lower the action value, the further up they are in the queue, and the closer they are to taking their next action. Here, look at the action values of my Susan and Branya and Asta. Then I'm going to use my Asta Alt, which increases speed. And now you can see their action values are a lot lower. What this really just means for you when you're building your team and your characters is to be mindful of speed values. Characters like Trailblaze MC and Giga Chad Jeppy are the characters that you want to have a lot of speed on. So prioritize building speed on characters that have low base speed and specifically support characters. I'll be making a separate, more specific in-depth video covering speed, advance forward, and all those interactions because I think it deserves uh, a, a video on its own. So next is energy. Max energy is basically just your energy cost to use your ultimate ability. Basic attacks regenerate 20 energy, skills regenerate 30. When you use your ultimate ability, you actually gain back 5 energy. The main source of generation for support type characters are generally going to be auto attacks, or as DPS characters like Destruction, Irredution, and Hunt characters, their main source of energy generation is going to be with their skill points and with finishing off their enemies. And one additional quick tip here, if you're unsure as to what action to take next to get your ultimate, you can always just come here to the character sheet and it will tell you your energy right here in the bottom. Follow-up attacks, as well as counter-attacks, since they are a form of follow-up attacks, do also generate energy, but it varies from character to character. Taking damage also helps generate energy. Different sources tend to say different things. What I have noticed is that attacks that tend to hit multiple times do generate more energy for you. Furthermore, characters that consistently do follow-up attacks or characters that can aggro enemies can generate a lot of energy very reliably. Effects that regenerate a flat amount of energy like Eidolons, Traces, Light Cones, or Ting Yun's ultimate are not affected by energy regeneration. It will only grant you that flat amount. Energy regeneration is extremely hard to come by. Currently, I know only of two ways. It's from the link rope. This goes up to basically like 20% energy regeneration. And then the Branya Light Cone can give an additional 10% energy regeneration. Next, let's talk about character aggro. This isn't a specific stat in the game, but it is a hidden stat. Increasing the aggro can be a lot more powerful than reducing your own aggro. It varies from ability to ability, but generally speaking, it's a lot less conditional and more favorable to increase a character's aggro rather than reducing a character's aggro. But ideally, you would combine both of them. So the way that aggro works, it's basically taking the aggro of your character and then dividing it by the aggro of the team to, sh to spit out the probability that a character will be targeted. The lower value of the aggro, the less likely character is to be targeted. So as you can see here, the preservation characters have a value of 150 versus a hunt character, which has a value of 75. The a hunt character is much less likely to be targeted in battle than a preservation character. These base value aggro numbers can be modified with different aggro modifiers that increase the chance to be targeted or decrease the chance. If you ever see that passive skill that says reduces the chance of them being targeted when they're under 50% HP, that's a 50% um, modifier. Another thing to pay attention to the wording is the word greatly. When you see the word greatly, it truly means greatly. As you can see here, Marches says greatly increases the chance of enemies attacking that ally. Clara has similar wording and their modifiers are the same. They're both at 500%. So when it says greatly, it really does mean that it's going to be greatly. And if you pair March 7th, put that shield on Clara when she uses her ultimate, you can bet your juice box that enemies are going to be targeting Clara.
Whenever you see the word greatly, you can assume it's going to be a big fat multiplier. In comparison to something like Lando's Choice, this has a 500% aggro multiplier versus Lando's Choice, which doesn't use the word greatly, only has a 200% aggro multiplier. A lot of people might confuse break effect for break effect efficiency. Weakness break efficiency increases how much your damaging abilities will break on that toughness bar. Break effect increases the amount of damage you deal when you break an enemy. It also affects how far the enemy actions are delayed. At a baseline, it's 25% whenever you break the weakness bar of an enemy. Weakness break will increase the bleed damage that he currently has and will we'll increase how far down the queue he is. Whenever you break an enemy, you'll do a set amount of weakness break damage. Break effect takes that set amount of damage and then just increases that damage by whatever your break effect is. So my Susan has 0% break effect right now. I'll put it in slow motion so it's easier to see. So, so that was 1142. Okay, so now I've increased my break effect to exactly 16 percent so now all we have to do is take 1142 multiply it by 16 percent and then add that 16 percent on top of 1142 and then that should give us our final break effect damage now let's go and see if that's how it actually works in practice so my susan has now a break effect of 16 percent so by our calculations it should be 1,325 damage. So let's see if that's the case. We're gonna break it. And as you can see, 1325. It's very straightforward and simple. If you were to get like 100% break effect, then you would basically be doubling your break effect damage. Think of weakness break like elemental mastery in Genshin Impact. There's a lot more to weakness break and break effect that I wanna talk about. But I'll leave that for a separate video because there's a lot more than meets the eye. For now, the most important thing for you to know is that for the most part, break effect is a pretty useless stat. Except on characters that have their kit built around weakness break effects. Characters like, like Hook who do a lot of burn damage. And most importantly, someone like Sam Po. It's probably not as good as something like crit rate and crit damage. But still might be a very nice substat to have on someone like Su Sheng. Now what about effect hit rate and effect resistance? Effect hit rate increases the chance of applying debuffs to a target. This is a very important stat to make use of, especially in the late game. Mainly nihilidity characters like uh, Sam Po and characters that, uh, that apply debuffs like Freeze, like March does. If you look here at March's ultimate ability, it has a 50% base chance to freeze enemies for one turn. This base chance means that it can be augmented. Effect hit rate increases the chance for an effect to trigger. Enemies have effect resistance. You can get that on your character as well, but generally speaking, effect resistance is pretty useless because it's hard to get 100% of it. And most of the time, it's just easier and more beneficial to remove the debuff entirely. It's still nice to have though. For example, Hook, has basically a 35% chance to avoid being frozen. Now enemies have a baseline of 10% effect resistance. This effect resistance scales up. Initially they have 10%, but as they level up to level 90, they get up to 30% effect resistance. And like I said, it's just simple math in addition. So let's take an enemy who is at level 90. He has 30% effect resistance. My March has 50% chance to be frozen, and on her relic stats, I was able to bring this up to 50%. So now I add the 50% chance to base freeze an enemy, and then another 50% from my relic stats. Now my March has 100% chance to freeze the enemy. The enemy has 30% chance to resist effects. The effect in this case is freeze. So now whenever my March uses her ultimate ability, she has a 100% chance to freeze, but then that's reduced to 70% because 100 minus the 30% effect resistance from the enemy drops down to 70%. So now she only has a 70% chance to freeze the enemy. It might sound complicated, 
Most guides will inform you how much effect hit rate you're gonna need anyways, but just keep in mind that if there if you see base chance, you can increase the chance to have that effect incur with effect hit rate. Now this is different from fixed chance. Fixed chance means that it cannot be augmented and you cannot increase the chance for the effect to occur no matter how much effect hit rate you have. So as you can see here on, on Yin King, fixed chance will not be affected by any factor. So I try to go through basically all the stats and break them down to be as simply understood as possible. Again, I'll be covering things like speed and break effect in their own separate videos because there's more I want to talk and say about them. And I don't want to drag out this video for too long. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them in the comment section down below. If you found this video helpful or useful, then please leave a like and consider subscribing as I plan on making more guides like this. Anyways, as always, remember to take care and have a glorious day.